Guess what, Meep? We've got another update for you. Have you always wanted to ship things between planets, but maybe... Maybe you didn't want to use a rocket. You know, maybe you accidentally took a hard right in the launch tube and got stuck. Dude, you're gonna need a bigger shovel. <laughs> now what? Now, we have a bigger shovel. And this is the interplanetary launcher here. So, essentially, what this item is doing is it's going to allow us to use... Uh, the same orbital cargo module mechanics that we have early on with our rockets. However, we can do this later on using the power of rad bolts. Let me show you what's up. So let me show you how this works. Meep, if you want to jump onto this rocket real quick. There you go, buddy. Just as a refresher, this orbital cargo module here can store many different things inside of it. One thing it cannot do, though, is food. This is how this works. So, if Meep, you want to take off and just kind of go out into space real quick. There he goes. Now, once this rocket is out in space, in orbit around the, uh, a planet here, so within this kind of pink circle here, what you can do is go inside of here and hit deploy on the orbital cargo module. And once you do that, you should see that a an item should fall from space. There they go. There's three of them, these little bullet-looking things. So this is an interplanetary payload and it's deployable from space. So with a rocket, what you can do is you can fly out to this spot right here, not land, but drop those payloads and then fly back. However, you have to send a dupe to do that. So how this launcher is, you can fill it up with a whole bunch of stuff. You have solids, liquids, or gases. They can all be filled inside of there. And because you can load this up using the cargo loader, this actually allows you to send food through the planet, through the payload system. So if I click edible over here real quick, you can see that Meep's going to grab a little bit of, mmm, berry sludge. Delicious. And you know what, whatever else you can throw in there. So all of that stuff finds its way into the launcher over here. So you have a couple controls here. The launch mass, which is in kilograms up to 200. And then you have the launch cost, which is 250 rad bolts per launch. Irregardless of how much stuff you're launching. At least in the current setup. So that's actually a fair amount of rad bolts. All right, so to make use of this, what we're going to do is click the change button, and this allows us to target different planetoids. Now, I don't think it's really useful for going to a nearby planet, unless you just have a bunch of extra rad bolts or something. And it's probably not useful to go to your second planet because you can just use the teleporter. I think where something like this really comes in handy is for those planets that are much further away, where it would take a very long time to send a dupe there and back, which is just resource intensive. So if we wanted to visit the magma planet and try to set up a little colony there, we may want to send a bunch of payloads ahead of our rocket so that then we can build the landing pad and all the other stuff that we need once we actually get there. So if I click on this, we'll see the launcher target that location. Boop! <laughs> and then fire off a couple of bullets right there. So these are traveling just like rockets and they actually travel fairly quick. So they'll move several tiles per cycle. This also seems like a good way to launch some food from one planet to another in case you run into an emergency. That said, it does take a lot of rad bolts. So where does something like this fit in? Well, if you take a look at the research, you can see that it is fairly advanced and it's right there with like large cargo bay and stuff like that. So it's another way to ship things between spots. And I think it also is kind of an end goal. You know, once you have extra rad bolts and you can make use of them, beyond just your research here. This gives you something to do with them. All right, so let's see what this looks like when we max it out. Look at all these rad bolt generators. Brrr. Yeah. Totally unrealistic, but pretty cool. But you can see just how quickly this thing can launch if you build up, let's say, several thousand rad bolts inside of it. <laughs> Look at this star map. <laughs> One thing I've noticed about this is that it doesn't have any automation. I think they should add an automation port to this. You know, launch, no launch. That's all we really would need. More launchers. Yes. All right, so taking a look at this planet, you can see the little payloads dropping in every now and then. So there's a couple of different ways we can go about unloading these so that we can make good use of them. I think the most uh, straightforward way would be to have like a rover, because a rover can actually come on over here like this and can unload them for you without your dupes being exposed to space and whatnot. Oh, they added a little sound for him. You've got a lot of work, man. <laughs> More... Boop. There you go. Have a little water. If you want to automate this so you don't have to go around and click on each one of these little payloads, 
you can use a payload opener just like this and the duplicates will automatically kind of go and use this machine. This will also give you access to little ports just like this. So solids can come out there. Liquids can do this number. And in case you're wondering, no, this doesn't need to be exposed to space. This can be inside your base as well. Okay, Meep. Meep. Ah. All right, Meep. Show me how it's done. There he goes. He's picking up all the little planetary things. And he runs on the little machine just like so. And there we go. We have some dirt. You can actually get away without building up all the conveyor rails. If you deconstruct them and whatnot. It just builds up inside the storage here. And then essentially all you do is just deconstruct this opener. And then all of its contents will just fall out. It is actually faster than having your dupes run around and open up the little payloads. You can see just how long it takes them to do this. Meep's just staring it to death. There you go. <laughs> There's no animation for that. So that right there is how the interplanetary launcher works. It's a simple machine, but I think it's going to open up a lot of flexibility and options as you get further into the game. One of the other things they added to this update was some sounds for the orbital microlab. So Meep. Let them hear what it's like. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So that right there covers the big things. But another thing that they are mentioning here is planet mutations. So we might see those showing up here pretty soon. At any rate, though, that's all I got time for today. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Sorry if it was a little bit shorter. This is the second time I had to record it. You plug in a different monitor, blows up everything, including recording software. And this is why we can't have nice things. On one final note, I will have you guys know that my next playthrough is really going to start once the next, these updates have stabilized a little bit. I don't really want to start up another playthrough only for them to have the research change and all of that stuff uh, to where I'd have to go and start the whole game over again. Because we have seen some updates here that, well... <laughs> They've changed stuff so much that I would indeed have to start over. So I'm going to wait for things to stabilize a little bit and then the next playthrough will start up. So for those of you that were asking, that's what I'm waiting for. But until then, I'll just cover the updates as they come at us. At any rate, have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothcar out.